Howdy, howdy ho. Let me start by answering your burning question. Yes, yes I did. You might be thinking that since I reviewed the base game, my review of the PSVR 2 version would be skewed. That's partially true, which is why this review will be focused on gameplay. And in that, as you might expect, comes both good and bad. Before we get into it though, do yourself a favor and turn on laser sights for all weapons. Thank me later. Now on to the bad. A game not designed from the ground up in VR is bound to have issues, and this game is no exception. Some of your gear is placed out in front of you, which can already feel a bit awkward, but more importantly, scoped rifles are still a bit of a headache. In this case, the zoom is quite blurry, more on graphics later of course, but also chambering another round can either cause you to hit your headset or force you to unscope to do it. No matter how much I practiced and got fairly proficient at it, it was simply easier to just angle and shoot using the laser sight. Except when you're forced to use the thermal scope for regenerators. In addition, some other things will feel awkward and harder to use in VR, like the cannon, and cinematic slash QTEs jump out to third person which utterly destroys immersion, unfortunately. Many interactions simply happen in third person without you actually operating anything. Yikes. Now on to the good. As you might expect of VR, some things are dramatically more immersive, particularly when going stealth and parrying. In fact, trust me when I tell you to fight Krauser purely with a knife. Even the minecart ride, despite Louis' head being poorly placed, is an entirely different animal in VR. Puzzles require an observation benefit too, and are far more fun to solve in VR, despite me already knowing the solution. Overall, gameplay becomes a balancing act with a sway towards the good over the bad. While it definitely has VR misses, it delivers elsewhere. And yes, yes I did. This actually might disappoint you. The Mercenaries mode and Separate Ways DLC do not have a VR mode. This seems like such a miss to me, particularly Mercenaries, where gunplay in VR is the game's core difference. This means you'll watch the credits roll about 15 hours later in the campaign, and that's that. Fortunately, these games have always leaned hard into New Game Plus modes. At least you can view the models in VR, though. And yes, yes I did. This is ultimately another balancing act. I find myself saying that a lot, but it's often true. The game is far blurrier than you might have been hoping for. It looks close to around 1080p, but when the screens are strapped inches from your retinas, this is relatively blurry. It seems to use dynamic resolution, but the key point is that you're not getting native PSVR 2 screen resolutions. This does fortunately mean the graphics stay relatively turned up, making this one of the best looking VR games you can play. This segues nicely into the other benefit of VR, environmental immersion. The darkness envelopes you so much better, especially when you choose to hold the flashlight. That, and if you're using earbuds, the lead up to fighting Verdugo is easily a more spine chilling experience. Oh, and uh, you'll really enjoy the regenerador sections too. Heck, who am I kidding? VR is made for horror, so any section where you're surrounded by darkness is simply better. It's just a pity that, as aforementioned, cinematics are purely in 2D. And yes, yes I did. This review is focused on the translation to VR more so than the core game itself. Thus, when looked at as a PSVR 2 experience, a lot more cracks and flaws in concepts and executions show themselves that would not, and aren't, present in the main game. Expect some conceptual gameplay hiccups and having to get used to not everything being in VR. This unfortunately also includes two of the game's modes, primarily a greater miss on mercenaries than separate ways. So while I absolutely enjoy the game itself, again, there's a bit of an ups and downs ride going on when played in VR. But let me admit it now, I'm damned glad I got to see Ashley in VR. I give Resident Evil 4 on the PSVR 2 an 8 out of 10. And yes, yes I did.